Good morning, everyone. How are we feeling this morning? It's so wonderful to see so many friends in the audience today. My name is Ann Kang, and I'm the Minister for Municipal Affairs and Immigration, and I will be your MC this exciting morning here in Terrace. It's an honor to be joining you today on the territory of the Xinjiang peoples. And uh, thank you so much to Coast Mountain College for having us here. And thank you so much to uh, the President, Lori Wei, for uh, the preparation uh, with your community here as well. And as I flew in this morning, I saw how beautiful the lands are here, the air and the beautiful trees. So I really do give my hands up and thanks so much to the Shenzhen peoples for being stewards of this beautiful land. I would also like to acknowledge those in attendance today. We have Premier David Eby, the Honorable Nathan Cullen, Minister of Land, Water and Resource Stewardship, Mayor, uh, Mayor Trellis, Mayor Gladys uh, Atrill, Mayor of Smithers, you're all in different orders. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Herpon, Mayor of Prince Rupert, Jennifer Rice, MLA of North Coast, and Mayor Sean Buitaj, Mayor of <laughs> We have so many mayors in attendance and so many area directors. Thank you so much for being here and as well other guests who are so excited about what we're going to announce today. I'm so happy that we're able to uh, be here for another uh, important announcement. Building strong sustainable economy is a priority to our government and British Columbia is an incredible place that we call home and as a recent BC stats report confirms our province is experiencing its highest population growth in 50 years and we need to be prepared to embrace all the opportunities that come with that growth not just in our largest urban regions but also in our regional centers and resource communities we are listening to rural voices to ensure that we are all working together to address the challenges Northwest communities are facing. And we are committed to ensuring that people in Northern BC have the services they need to support economic growth in their communities. Now it's my great pleasure to invite someone who does not need any introduction at all, Premier David Eby to the podium to discuss how we're supporting people living in the Northwest. today. Uh, it's great to see you and, uh, and it's wonderful to be uh, part of this announcement. Uh, my uh, colleagues behind me, Ann Kang, uh, Nathan Cullen, Jen Rice, have been advocating for this day and working to get it done for a long time. I want to thank them uh, right off the hop for their amazing work on this. Now, <laughs> now I know uh, I've heard the rumors uh, and I just want to say it's not true. Uh, I do not prefer the city of Terrace just because City Hall is on E.B. Street. Uh, that is uh, completely incorrect. Um, but I do have a special uh, place in my heart for Terrace and, and for the Northwest uh, generally. Um, it is a beautiful and amazing part of our province. Uh, when, every time I visit here, the people are so welcoming, so kind. The people here are independent, entrepreneur, entrepreneurial, they're fierce and uh, they're friendly and welcoming. And it is a great place to put down roots. One of my wife's uh, good friends, post-medical school, uh, uh, she and her family moved to Terrace because they love the outdoor lifestyle and they love being here and happily uh, they are both doctors. Uh, and so I know the attraction of this part of the world for so many people. Um, one of the realities though of uh, the shifting nature of BC's economy and uh, how it works is that resource development in the Northwest and the fact that this is part of the big part of the economic engine of our province uh, is taking place uh, outside of the centers where people live. Uh, 
uh, the tax base for the major employers is not connected at all to the cities and the communities where people who work there live. And that disconnect has meant that prosperity is being generated in this part of the world, but that the cities and the communities that host the people who generate that prosperity uh, haven't shared in it in the way that they should have. And that means difficult conversations with mayors and the provincial government. You know, we set up a growing communities fund, a billion dollars uh, for municipalities uh, across the province to support them with critical infrastructure that they need. And I uh, sat down with Mayor Buitaj and I said, Sean, this has got to be so exciting for you and Terrace, you know, we got this money, what are you going to do with the money? And he said, uh, we're going to cap our landfill. I was like, what? Oh, that's so heartbreaking. Here's some money that other communities are able to use for community centers, for arenas, for parks, for amenities. And uh, Terrace's situation, because the people who live here work in industry that's located outside of the city, and the tax base is not here, it means that you've got to use the money to cap the landfill. And I uh, met with Mayor Pond and talked about the situation of water pipes in Prince Rupert. You know, uh, I met the guy who spent Christmas, instead of spending Christmas with his family, he spent Christmas saving the water system about a year and a half ago in Prince Rupert from total collapse. This is a, one of the major ports in North America. This is a massive economic driver of not just the Northwest, not just the province of BC, but the entire country and the water system almost collapsed because the pipes are so old. Uh, that uh, they leak, and when they leak quickly, if the water level drops, the pipes will just collapse flat and the whole water system is done. So that is the state of uh, infrastructure and the challenges that have faced local government leaders here for far, far too long. And it was very obvious uh, to me as my colleagues came and pointed out these things again and again that we needed to do something to fix it. And that's what today's announcement is about. Budget 2024 allocates a quarter of a billion dollars, $250 million annually to the RBA. for people living in the Northwest BC. And I want to thank everyone involved 
uh, for their tireless work and advocacy to make this work a reality. So once again, thank you so much to all the mayors, uh, the advocacy group, and as well the co-chairs for all your work. Another champion that you have in your community is MLA Jennifer Rice. Uh, Emma, uh, she's the MLA for North Coast, as many of us would know, and I pulled her because she inspires me all the time with her passion when we speak about the RBA. She said, this has been the result of so much intergovernmental cooperation and collaboration and persistence with passion advocates from all levels. So I do want to thank her especially for the work and as well for my colleague and uh, my predecessor at Municipal Affairs for all his work and guidance in getting us to this place. I know that since I became a minister, the Minister for Municipal Affairs, I've had countless conversations with members of the RBAs and sometimes I go, yes, gosh, they're back. <laughs> they're back at the legislature maybe once every week. Um, it feels that way. And um, so local governments from this area and, and also all members of RBA, uh, that this new funding is really greatly needed. Working with RBA communities to get this new RBA funding in place has been a priority for me as it is part of our government's efforts to build a strong and sustainable economy in all parts of British Columbia. This new RBA funding will better address the unique infrastructural needs of each community in this large and diverse region as we all continue to grow together in a sustainable way. And I'm so excited to see how BC's Northwest communities do this, use this funding to make real difference for people in this region, which is being reshaped by a new generation of resource development. As I mentioned, I've had many numerous conversations with members of the RBA, one especially, a lot, <laughs> and Texas, a lot. Mayor Sean Huitaj. It is my pleasure to invite Mayor Sean Huitaj to speak his passion. Sebastian, <clears throat> I would like to acknowledge that we are gathered here on the traditional territory of the Shipshin people, the Kitsum Kalem, and the Kitsilas. I would also like to acknowledge my co-chairs, Mayor Atrell and Mayor Pond. <clears throat> I would also like to acknowledge our predecessors as well. Bill Miller, Stacy Tires, Barry Pages, Phil Gramuth, Lee Brain, Chris Olson, Shane Brian, and everyone else who worked tirelessly to get us to this point. Today is a historical day for Northwest BC. For 10 years, the Northwest Resource Benefit Alliance has been lobbying the provincial government for a resource revenue sharing agreement. In September of 2019, at the UBCM convention, then Premier John Horgan committed to getting a revenue sharing agreement done with the RBA. This led to the Northern Capital Planning Grant where $100 million came in 2020 and $50 million came in 2021. After the $100 million, the world spiraled into unprecedented times, with COVID-19 putting all focus on the pandemic, with resource and attention put into saving lives, the RBA was parked for over a year. In the spring of 2022, then Minister of Municipal Affairs Nathan Collin met with the entire RBA in Terrace and put this discussion back on track. Moving forward, September of 2022, at the UBCM convention, the Northwest Resource Benefit Alliance and the provincial government signed a memorandum of understanding to negotiate and get a deal done. 17 months later, many trips to Victoria, I am proud to say that this government has kept its promise committing a quarter billion dollars to Northwest BC over the next five years. <laughs> this agreement is a game changer for our communities. Today, Northwest BC can raise its head again. We can walk a little taller and we'll be able to start building our communities back. We'll be able to replace aging infrastructure that we had no ability to replace before. 
Roads can be repaired, water lines replaced, sewer lines rebuilt, sidewalks fixed, bike lanes made, downtowns can be revitalized, and many other needed infrastructure projects can be done. This agreement is not something to us, it is everything to us. On behalf of Massett, Port Clements, Dodge and Geeds, Prince Rupert, Port Ed, Kitimat, Terrace, Stewart, Hazelton, New Hazelton, Smithers, Telqua, Houston, Grand Isle, Fort St. James, Burns Lake, Fraser Lake, Vanderhoof, North Coast Regional District, the Regional District of Kitimat Stikine, the Regional District of Baltina Chapel, I say to you, Premier E.B. Toyoksuk Noon, thank you. You have been our, our champion since becoming Premier, our friend and someone who cares about our communities. And to you, Minister Kang, Minister Collin, MLA Rice, and everyone here, Toyoksuk Newsom, thank you all. As my good friend Chris Olson would say, the North is better when we work together, and boy did we work together. Thank you all for being here on this monumental day for Northwest BC. Namalganitism, we will see you all later. Thank you so much, Mayor Bumitash. Thank you so much for the work that you and your co-church, your predecessors, everyone here providing your advocacy, your voice, and as well my colleagues and the Premier. This has been an amazing journey, and today is a result of that. This new agreement we're announcing today builds on our investments in the region. As the Premier may have already um, uh, prelude the words that I, I will be saying, uh, we have made so many uh, different uh, investments across British Columbia at different times. Through the Northern Healthy Community Fund, we've invested more than $18 million so far in 100 projects that strengthen services in Northern BC communities experiencing rapid economic growth. The Northern Health and Community Communities Fund is for communities directly adjacent to the LNG Canada and coastal gas link projects that are currently facing increasing needs due to rapid economic growth. Since 2019, the BC government has also provided $150 million in grants through the Northern Capital and Planning Grant to help local governments with planning and infrastructure improvements. And last year, we provided the $1 billion Growing Community Fund, which is helping all municipalities and regional districts throughout the province to address their specific infrastructure demands, to prepare their communities for future growth, and to build the communities, the amenities, and the services needed to support new home construction. These combined investments are helping us keep the North vital, supported, and prepared for all the opportunities that come with growth and rapid economic development. I would like to thank everyone for joining us here today, and a special thanks again to all of our partners, the mayors, local government colleagues in attendance, and we are so grateful for the incredible work that everyone has done in your communities here and every day. I look forward to hearing from you and working with many of you to support communities throughout the province further so that BC's bright future is shared with everyone.